Hey folks, Mangrel, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna try to fit Iron Man into our Tango 2 Pro, which means we are gonna try to add Express LRS to this controller. So this is natively a Crossfire controller, but I wanna play around with Express LRS. Now you've got two ways of doing this. The easy and probably the way that most folks are gonna do this is they will purchase a TBS Tango 2 module bay add-on. And this piece here, actually sticks onto the back of the controller over here and lets you slot in a module, whether it's Express LRS, Free Sky, whatever that module may be, it lets you slot that in. But in my mind, that kind of defeats the best purpose of, of best purpose, no, the best feature of this controller, which is its compact size. If you want to add modules and things to the back, well, there are remote controllers out there that are better suited for something like that. So I want to try to keep this in the same sort of uh, footprint and same kind of size. So I'm going to try to get that module somehow stuck inside the actual controller, inside the guts of the controller. So we'll see how I make out there. Now, before you get started, make sure you are comfortable doing something like this. This is not for the faint of heart. The chances of burning this thing out, damaging this is pretty high. So once you've decided to do this, let me show you what parts I'm using. I'll give you links to all these parts in the video description. They will be affiliate links. If you do want to do this modification, I do appreciate you using those links. It goes a long way to helping me make these kind of videos and also dealing with the ramifications of something getting damaged or, or burning out. So the first piece you're going to need is this happy model uh, module bay kind of attachment. So there are two versions of this. There's this guy here, which is designed for lower power modules. And then there's this guy, which actually connects into the battery. Now, based on me having both of these and doing some work on the multimeter, it looks like this one is going to be a better match for what we're trying to do. We can actually get this guy working without this board. So you can see this board doesn't have too many components in it. Whereas the TBS board has all these components on this piece here. So I think this is gonna be a better match for us. Plus we can put in a higher power module and we'll have to see what that does for temperature and overheating, but I'm gonna use this one. Next, you'll need your actual module. So I went with the Happy Model ELRS uh, ES24 TX Slim. So I got the cheapest version. So this one was, I think about $30. And the key here is I wanna get the smallest particular module I can. So if I take a look at this, we'll see what comes in the box. So of course we've got Iron Man, we're not gonna need that. We've got the actual module itself. So you can see it's quite small. So I'm hoping I can fit this into the uh, transmitter okay. We've got some screws, we've got a fan. So these are parts we're not going to use. We've got the eyeballs of Iron Man. So these are lights, we're not gonna use that either. And then we have two antennas. Well, actually one antenna, this is the uh, mount for the antenna and this is the antenna itself. Now I'm not going to use this initially because what I want to do is try to have the actual antenna inside the controller. So I purchased this and this is a barred pole 2.4 gigahertz uh, UFL antenna. So I'm going to try to have this inside the actual controller and then see what kind of range I can get. And if this doesn't work, I'll have to drill a hole in the controller housing and put something like this but I will start with this first and then go from there. And then the final thing you're gonna need are the actual receivers. So I got two different types of receivers. So I got the EP2 and man, this thing is so tiny. When I first opened this up, I thought maybe I ordered the wrong one. This thing is like the size of my fingernail. It's so tiny and it has the antenna already on there. That's the EP2. And then I also got the EP1 and the EP1 is very similar size, except it has an external antenna. So you can see very, very small kind of footprint. So once you have all these parts in order, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, the way I'm gonna approach this is I wanna work off camera and then I will take little pauses where I'll kind of fill you in on what I've done and sort of what the progress has been. And the reason why I'm doing that is I've got a habit of you know screwing things up and making mistakes when I'm on camera. And I don't want to risk that happening with this particular remote controller. So I will get started and then we'll check back in. You can see I've already removed the back plate of the controller. The manual for the controller has really good instructions on how to do that. And once you remove the back plate, you need to make sure that your TBS Tango is the proper version. So you can see I am version 1.1. 1 .1. 
and I've got this little attachment here. If yours does not have this little uh, ribbon cable attachment, of course the cable won't be there, but I've got the little connector there. If yours doesn't have that connector, then unfortunately you have to upgrade your motherboard force. Okay, so here's our first check-in. What I've done now is I've attached this particular board. So you can see that the board from Happy Model goes here. It connects to the battery port on the Tango 2. The battery itself goes here. And then over here, I've got that long cable attaching to that little daughter board. And then we have our Express LRS. What I've done now is I put in this particular TrueRC antenna. And I'm just doing this to make sure everything works before I get started. And I also want to go ahead and update the firmware before I kind of package all this together. I need to go ahead and plug it into USB and do the firmware update. But long term, the intent is for me to solder three wires to here, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this connector, and have those three wires soldered directly to this board so we can get rid of all the other crap. Oh, I can't say crap. All the other stuff and just have this fitting inside here. Now that we have the module installed, what you want to do is you want to go under menu. You want to go down all the way to a section called external RF. So where is it? External RF. Right there, external RF. And you're going to set this to crossfire because Express LRS does use Crossfire as its communication protocol. And as soon as you do that, you should see the actual module show up. So if I hold down the menu key, and I've got, of course, the Lua script here. If I go in there, we see our module. Now on the computer, you're gonna require a software called the Express LRS Configurator. And this is the software you use to update the firmware on your transmitter module along with your receivers. So there are lots of videos out there on how to use this. I'll go fairly quickly because this video is getting very long already, but you're just gonna search for your device and the name of the devices are pretty straightforward, but the Happy Model website will tell you what targets to use in case you wanna confirm. But we know ours is the ES24TX, we'll select that. And then all this comes pretty much uh, defaulted in. I only selected this and I gave this our binding phrase. This is what uh, will be used to, to link over to your receivers. So you want to make sure you've got this the same on kind of all your devices. And then finally, you're going to select the COM port that corresponds to your transmitter. So you can go ahead and plug it in, see what shows up, unplug it, see what this appears to figure out what it is. You're going to click on build and flash, and this will probably take about five minutes to do its thing, but this will now update your device. And then going forward, you can use the Wi-Fi to actually connect to your device and be able to do any kind of future firmware updates that way. Now, the final thing is we'll connect our Tango 2 Pro to the USB cable. We'll select the USB storage connection method, and then we'll come here, click on download Lua script, and we wanna put this Lua script onto our Tango 2 Pro. So you should see two devices show up, USB drive and Tango 2, you want the USB drive. We'll go under scripts, we'll go under tools, and then we'll stick this Lua script over here. Time for our next check-in. Here you can see I've soldered up the three wires that the module requires. So I went ahead and I figured out which of the connectors on this particular ribbon cable here are the cables we require. So first one is the signal, or I guess S bus. Next one is nothing. Next two are the positive connections. And then next two are the negative connections. So I only connected to the one leg for positive and negative, but it looks like both of those are positive and negative. And then on the other side, on the module side, so you can see first one is the signal, next is negative, next is positive. So I haven't turned this on yet. So let's turn this on and see how good I am with a multimeter. Now this may be the shortest uh, video ever. It may burn everything out as soon as I do this, but let's see. So power. Welcome to Tango 2. Okay, so I see that this has lit up. So there is no smoke, everything seems okay. Now the big test, I've already done the firmware update. I've already put the Lua script on this remote. So I'm gonna very carefully turn this guy around and we have exposed connections and stuff. So I gotta be very careful. 
So I'm going to turn him around. Come on, you can do it. Turn around. Turn around. All right. So this is going to be a little bit kind of flashy on your side, but I'm going to go to Express LRS. And if everything's working, yep, yeah, so there we go. We can see it has pulled in the details. So this particular module supports, all right, what does it support? I can go 50 hertz, 100 hertz, 150, 250, 333, 500, D250, D500, F, uh, 500, F1000. So let me go 250. And in terms of trans, transmitter power, I can go 25, no, I can go 10, 25, 50, 100, 250. So it looks like this is a 250 milliwatt um, transmitter, which, you know what? That's perfectly fine for me. I don't do long range, but again, something to bear in mind. I have dynamic power off right now, which is fine. I want to see how hot this thing gets on the bench. Now, you may be wondering how these ribbon cable connectors work. It's very simple. Let me free up this hand and I'll show you. Pretty much you use your nails. So you can see I've grown my nails a little bit for this particular modification. Just grab that little black piece, lift it all the way up. So all the way. So you want it to be straight like that. And then you can grab your ribbon cable. You want the blue side facing up. We're going to just stick that in there. And then you're going to close the black part. So it's very simple, but the key here is you gotta make sure that this black holder is all the way up. Sometimes it opens up halfway and the cable won't fit in. Okay, folks, I think time for another check-in. You can see I've got the whole controller taken apart. Again, the manual from TBS does a good job of explaining how to do all this. So you know what? I can't do a better job than TBS, so you go ahead and look at the manual. But I spent my time working on this guy and I've been trying to figure out how best to position this within the controller. And I think the best place is on the front of the controller right here. And what I've been doing just to prepare that is I've got the antenna plugged in and coming out this way. I've also got the cables all wired up. So you can see the colors are white, which is our signal. Then it's uh, ground and then it's the five volt. I've got it like this. I also sanded a little bit of the USB port, so it was coming out too far, so it wouldn't fit in between here. So I sanded just a little bit using the Dremel. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put a little piece of string tubing on this guy because it's got exposed components and I'm sandwiching it between here and the actual case. So I want to make sure it doesn't, it doesn't short circuit. So just a little piece of shrink tubing. I'm going to place it over here. And this guy should just keep everything you know, nice and uh, protected just in case. So just like that. I'm going to shrink tube this and then I'm going to stick it over here. And the good thing with the whole happy model uh, board here, this board, it comes with a bunch of double sided foam tape. So I'll just use this to attach this. Now we do have to make a quick modification to the front case piece. So I do cut a little bit of this L-shaped piece of plastic at the bottom there, and I make it about the same height as the button below. All right, folks, time for our next check-in. You can see I've made a lot of progress here. So I did fine tune some of the installation, but more importantly, I did do a bench temperature test. So I put the module into full power. So I had it blasting 250 milliwatts and I had it connected with this guy here. So this is a EP2 receiver. So I had it connected for about 10 minutes on the bench and I came back and I did a temperature check. So behind the Tango 2 board where the main processor is was already about 45, 46 degrees. So then I turned everything off, quickly disassembled. And I checked the temperature of our module and it was around 43, 44 degrees. So no real concern about temperature. And really 10 minutes is the equivalent to probably two, three flights. So by the time you go ahead and you land, you kind of change batteries, it'll give this a chance to cool down anyway. But also, you're probably not going to have this running on full power all the time anyway. So most likely you'll have dynamic power. It'll go up and down based on how far you are. So really, I have no concerns about temperature here. 
Um, what else? So I went ahead and I fine-tuned the wire routing a little bit. So I got the antenna for the ELRS coming out through here, this hole here. I've also got the cable for the power coming out here. You'll notice that I did connect the two pins together just to give it a bit more solid connection. That's kind of optional. You don't have to do that. And here is where I've got the module placed. So I placed it in between the two gimbals almost flush with the USB port and I've got the cables routed this way. So it seems to fit really, really well. And then for the happy model board here, I did put a little piece of the foam tape down here and then I'll probably put another piece of foam tape over here just to hold this piece down once I get that connector attached. And we're all done. It came out really nicely, very neat. The only thing I'm not sure about is the antenna. So I put this antenna over here. I double side taped it over to the battery and I wanted to have this further forward kind of over here, but the length of this particular antenna doesn't fit between these two rocker switches. So we'll go with this and then worst case, if the range isn't good and I'm not happy with it based on my kind of flying, I'll make a hole in the Tango 2 case and then I'll run an external antenna. But you can see it came out very, very nice, very neat and organized. And I did put that one additional piece of double-sided tape I mentioned over here just to hold down this board nice and secure. And it's testing time. And my goal here is to see how well does the internal antenna actually perform. So I'm running the module in 250 hertz mode, which tells me that it has a sensitivity of minus 108 dBm. So if we see that DBM getting pretty close to minus 108, we know we're in trouble. I'm also running this in 250 milliwatt dynamic power, which is the highest that this module can perform. And dynamic power is how I'd be flying anyway. So again, remember the goal is not a range test. The goal is to see how well this actually performs. And I'm gonna use my typical garage test, which is how I tested the DJI Remote Controller 2, my Crossfire and the Remote Controller 1. So my test here is gonna involve two quads. I'm gonna test this first of all with this particular quad here. This has the EP2, which has that little tiny onboard um, antenna, the little ceramic antenna. But that's not a very typical or good test because we know it's gonna have lower range. So I'm also gonna test it with the EP1, which has the actual external antenna over here. So I'm gonna put both of these in the garage, do my typical test, and my goal here is, can I get at least the same range as the DJI remote controller, which I believe gave me 105 meters of range before it fail saved? Time for the first test. So here you're looking at the EP2 in the top left corner. That's the one that has the built-in antenna. And then the bottom right is our EP1 with a more traditional kind of antenna. And this test here is using that uh, TrueRC barred pole antenna. And we're gonna be making a stop very soon. So here's our first stop. So we are at 33 meters and we're seeing the EP1 at minus 90 dBm and the EP2 at minus 95 dBm. Now you may be saying to yourself, hey, that's only five dBm's difference, but I believe each six dBm's is a doubling of the signal. So this kind of means that the signal is almost like half of what it is between two of them, to so bear that in mind as well. Now our second stop here is at 73 meters. Again, no surprise, the EP1 is doing a lot better than the EP2. Link quality is still fairly decent. For me, you know, I think about like an 80, 75% kind of cutoff for link quality, but it all depends on your kind of flying and your, your personal kind of preference. But to me, that is a-okay. Now, next snapshot here is 105 meters. This is where our DJI actually fail safes. And we're seeing the EP1 is holding okay, getting pretty close to our receiver sensitivity of minus 108. But the EP2 is a lost cause with 13% link quality. And then final snapshot at 150 meter, EP2 is gone. After reviewing the results of the initial test, I was a little bit uh, disappointed in how this performed. I expected a lot more from Express LRS. Now, of course, you know, we don't have an ideal setup here for ELRS, but at the same time, I just expected more. Now, don't get me wrong, this still performed better than the DJI remote did in the exact same test. So DJI remote fail saved at 105 meters. This guy, 105 meters, it kept going. Yeah, it had terrible link quality, but it still kept going. 
So it's not too bad, but I want to do one more test here because I know Crossfire on 500 milliwatts in the exact same situation, in the same test, goes over 1200 feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ditch this antenna and I'm going to use the stock antenna that came with the module, which is this guy here. And what I've done is I've 3D printed a SMA holder. So I've removed the original antenna from the Tango 2 and I've replaced it with a Immortal T because I suspect maybe that's what this actually is. It has a distinctive Immortal T shape. So I've got this now connected as my Crossfire antenna and this is now my ELRS antenna. I'm gonna give this a try and then see how well this performs. Now for the second test, we're using the antenna that came with the Happy Model transmitter module and we're using our EP1 receiver. So we see here that at the first kind of checkpoint, we're getting a little bit better signal on the external antenna versus the internal, no surprise there. Same thing on the second checkpoint, we're seeing a little bit of a better rating here. Now this is, I think, again, minus six difference is about doubling of the signal. So it's working quite a bit better. Again, no surprise, even better here. We're getting minus 94 dBm versus minus 101 dBm and better link quality as well. So definitely working a lot better with the external antenna versus the internal barred pole antenna. And then here at 150 meters out, the internal antenna was kind of already losing signal. The external one in this case is holding. So I do go a bit further. So I actually go out to a checkpoint number five, which is 195 meters out. And at this point, we're starting to see a little bit of a weaker signal. Minus 103 dBm is getting pretty close to our receiver sensitivity. And 60% link quality is below my kind of standards. And then finally at number six, even though we're further out, we see a little bit better results. And then finally, I do a bit of a test here with the actual internal Immortal T using Crossfire. I wanna see how this compares now. So we can see at 33 meters, first checkpoint, Crossfire and ELRS have very similar kind of DBMs, but Crossfire seems to always stick to that 100% link quality, whereas ELRS seems to go up and down, which is a bit strange. Even though we have a way stronger signal on ELRS, I'm still seeing that um, the link quality is lower. So even here, minus 107 dBm on Crossfire, we still have 100% link quality. And I think that has to do with the lower kind of transmission um, hertz or refresh rate. So Crossfire at this point would be on 50 hertz, whereas ELRS is trying to hold that 250 hertz. So less of the packets are getting through. And finally, you know, 195 meters out, we're seeing Crossfire is getting pretty weak at minus 112, but interestingly enough, 90% link quality. So a bit of a surprise there. And then I do one more checkpoint at 250 meters out, and we're seeing ELRS is doing fine, but 70% link quality is getting low for my taste. Now here are my final thoughts. I wanna run this in this configuration. I've got the Express LRS antenna coming out the top, so externally, and then I've got the Immortal T on the inside. And that seems to give me good range for my kind of flying, and I'm pretty happy with that anyway. Now I did notice one weird kind of behavior on how the external module attachment works with the Tango 2. And I think this is a firmware issue. And um, I tried looking online. I did not see anyone else having this problem. So a little bit um, strange that I'm having this, but it seems to happen as soon as you use the external model, module attachment. So whether it's the Happy Model one or if it's the TBS one, as soon as I plug that ribbon cable into the motherboard, this behavior happens. So let me show you this. Right now I am in Express LRS and my battery voltage is 3.9 volts. I'm gonna select a different model. So I've got a model for each of these. So I'm gonna go Crossfire. You wanna say select model. And as soon as I do that, you see that battery voltage starts to drop. And then very soon it's gonna go into low battery mode. But I check with a multimeter, the voltage of the battery does not actually drop. So something about how it's reading the voltage. So you see we're down to 3.1. Now I don't want this to shut down and go exit. But you see how it's very, very low. Now, other cool thing is, let me, at let me attach a quad to this now. So I'm gonna plug in my Crossfire quad 
and we want the receiver to connect. Transmitter battery low. So you see we now have a receiver connected and we should see that the voltage jumps back up again. So something about how it's reading the voltage, it's got some kind of issue. And again, it's not related to this modification. My experience is that as soon as you add the module bay attachment, this happens. So one thing to bear in mind there. Now the final piece is our module inside here for the Express LRS, that is limited to 250 milliwatts. You may need more power. So Happy Model does make a uh, one watt module is called the Slim Pro. Now I think that will fit in here as well. Um, I don't have one on hand to experiment with, but hey, happy model if you're watching this and you want to send me one, I'd be happy to play with that. So there we have it, a successful procedure here and seems to be working really, really well if you want to have a Express LRS and a Crossfire kind of capability in your Tango 2 or Tango 2 Pro. So make sure to like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more videos.